Hey everybody. Well, it's another beautiful day here in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, a little overcast, kind of a, well, sun's kind of trying to peek out now, but it's, it's, it's real nice, real mellow. I'm down here in the greenhouse and I'm swapping out uh, one of the reservoirs here with the uh, cucumbers. These guys are feeding so fast. Uh, five days ago, the reservoir was at 1,500 parts per million and uh, it's at 350 right now. So I'm going to just swap it out and uh, pump her back up and, uh, <laughs> and get her going. Uh, I apologize for the noise of the fans, guys. It's just that kind of a day down here. Uh, it's, I've got 80 degrees in here and 72% humidity. So kind of muggy. So I'm I'm letting those roll. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, since I'm by the cucumbers, I, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to show you these. That beautiful wife of mine has been up there pickling like you just wouldn't believe. And uh, check out the peppers too. Woo. So anyway, she's, uh, she's really awesome. And man, she makes the best pickles I've ever had in my life. <laughs> you know, baby. Okay, these, these things are the most prolific cucumbers I've ever seen in my life. They're called baby piccolinos. And I, I, I don't know if you can see good in there, but I'm down here and I'm picking five, six a day, maybe more all the time. They're just absolutely spectacular. They're really, really heavy feeders. Uh, I, I have them in with uh, three brandy wine tomatoes, and they're pretty heavy feeders too. But uh, yeah, they're 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 really going through the nutrients. Anyway, guys, listen, I've been uh, I've been getting a lot of mail and some pretty interesting questions. So uh, I, I yeah, I want to I want to talk about a couple of those today. Uh, <clears throat> I had got a letter uh, from somebody just a while ago named Paul who. Um, We've been watching Bobby's videos as well as mine, Bobby MHP Gardener, as well as mine. And uh, he got inspired to put a Dutch bucket to, uh, set up together. Well, he mailed me in some photos and uh, he, sh he showed me his Dutch bucket set, set up. It's spectacular. It's really awesome. I'm really excited by that. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm really jazzed if somebody's expired uh, by, by anything I'm doing. Uh, and wants to pursue it. Uh, and, and if you do do it, guys, shoot me in some pictures. I'd love to see them. I'm going to show Paul's garden here uh, and his setup uh, just in a little bit. We're going to talk about a couple other stuff first. But anyway, yeah, uh, if you do uh, set up some gardens, guys, uh, through any inspiration uh, of anyone on the internet, shoot, send me some pictures. I'll, I'll, I'll put them in the videos. Okay. Um, a couple of stuff I just want. Oh yeah, and I got some questions, you know, uh, like pertaining to how in the heck do I uh, <laughs> do I remember what's going on with each of the reservoirs and how much the plants are eating and and uh, that's a good question and I'll show you how I keep track of that. It's it's kind of a simple solution, but it works for me. And uh, and and the other question was, do I ever get diseases? <laughs> oh man. Um, in the Dutch buckets, I, I've I've not gotten. Uh, too much disease at all. In the NFT, that's, man, that's a whole different ball game right there. Uh, what I've found uh, to combat the diseases is uh, cleanliness. Uh, like be as clean as you possibly can. I, uh, I have a five gallon bucket of, of water that I keep over there. And the way I, the way I change my, my uh, reservoirs is I've just got a pump on a piece of uh, PVC tubing with just a hook. And I put it in, I pump it out, pump the new nutrients in, uh, five minute operation. Anyway, that's how I do it. The drawback behind that though, is if I have an infected tank or one that's growing pythium, I can take that pump and put it into to, to the other tanks and, and, and get everybody you know, feeling funky. So what I do is I keep a five gallon bucket full of a very, very, very mild bleach solution, like maybe 10%, uh, something that you'd find at a restaurant do their, their final rinse with their dishes. Just, just enough to kind of keep things from happening. Um, I dip my whole pump in that in between going to each reservoir. Uh, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but hey, you know, that's that stuff, man, especially the Pythium. Man, it's just crazy. Um, I haven't seen it in the Dutch buckets, like I've said. Uh, I have seen it in my NFT, something horrible, and I, I think NFT might be a little bit more prone to that uh, because it's a long tube exposed to the air, 
Uh, it has a, a, a lot of surface area to conduct the heat, and it's recirculating and just getting warmer and warmer and warmer, plus the, the regular heat of, of the day, right? So I've, I've seen it a lot in that. So I don't know how you guys are all swapping your reservoirs out, whether you do them at, uh, at, at once or you have multiple reservoirs, but I suggest really, really being, being clean like that. I know it sounds a little overboard, but you know I think it'll really help. Uh, also, believe it or not, uh, even down to cutting stuff off of one plant to another, I got my little thing. Give her a little shot, uh, dry it off. Uh, because last year, I, I, I cut something on one of the cucumbers and then I came down and I cut another one. Man, it followed it down. And uh, I'm kind of thinking originally, I might even brought it from a tomato. I, I, I don't know if that's possible or whatever, but it was a type of a fungus. And uh, I noticed a very similar fungus on my tomato. Anyway, so another thing I want to talk to you about <laughs> is supporting ear fruit. Now, I'm going to turn the camera around so you see what I mean. OK, check this out. Now I know this <laughs> I know this sounds crazy. But if you're growing these beefsteaks, guys, holy smokes, they they get heavy. I was over at the NFT system the other day and I was monkeying around with some lettuce that I got going. <laughs> and I hear this big bump, this thump, and kind of a rolling sound. I didn't think too much of it, and I kind of get going, and a little while later I I'm over here looking at this window here. I'm thinking, well, I'm going to open that up. I see a nice big old honking <laughs> green beefsteak tomato laying on the floor there. And it, it come, come from this one over here. Now, that's about a, at least a 10 and a half ounce tomato. Uh, I, you get a few of them on there. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring the camera in here so you, so you can see closely what I mean. But you get a, a, a few of those on there, and man, that weight just adds up. I, you know, I forgot to do it last year until it was doggone too late, and I darn near did it again this year. But uh, like, you know, you can <laughs> you can see some of the spots. These guys were just bent over. Now, there's a lot of weight on here, guys. I, I mean, you know, there is a lot of weight. So really, it. it you know, now, now some of the tomato varieties I've grown, I've never needed to do this. They, they just didn't get that big and they weren't that heavy. But uh, this is my first experience with the pink brandy wines. Woo, man, they're <laughs> I'm loving it. They're big and they're heavy and they'll just break off their own branches. So anyway, yeah, uh, if you're growing them, beef steaks, man, don't forget to support them. You can see I've just got them tied in every which way to, way to, way to hold those up. Uh, but anyway, we're, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna read some more mail. <clears throat> I've been discussing back and forth uh, email uh, with somebody just here recently, and uh, I, they'd asked me, like, you know, I'd mentioned, I guess, in one of the videos, you know, I, I kind of, uh, I, I feed according to how much they're using, and he, and he wanted some clarification on that. And uh, he was wondering, like, how the heck do I keep track of something like that if I'm dealing with four reservoirs? Well. Uh, I label them. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll go down here and, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, it's a really simple system. It's working really good for me. And, uh, and I'll explain what I mean by, uh, you know, uh, watching the plants and then feeding them by what they're consuming. Okay, we'll, we'll go on down here. We'll sit down here. It's just getting warm back here. We'll go up here. <laughs> it's closer to the door and buy a fan. So we'll go up there and uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean about uh, me labeling the reservoirs and then, then I can watch how much they're feeding. All right. Okay, what I do to remind myself about these reservoirs all the time is uh, every time I re replace them, which I, I, regardless, I do every 10 days. This one has been about every six days now uh, it, because, uh, well, actually about five, five days ago, <coughs> the nutrients uh, in this tank, I, I set them at 1500 and uh, they're down around 350 today. That's been about five days. So they're really going. So this one gets replaced quite a bit. The, the cukes and those beefsteaks are heavy feeders, guys. <laughs> any rate, you can see here what I do is uh, on the top of every reservoir, I just take a little piece of cheap uh, you know, painter's tape, the green stuff that pulls on and off. And uh, I write down the parts per million that I put in the tank at that time and, and what they're set at. Um, 
they're all generally a little different. And, uh, you know, I was asked, do I remember all that? No, I don't. I, that's why I, <laughs> that's, that's why I label each one, man. I'd set it and that's it and set it and forget it. Yeah, no, I forget it. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've got to do that. And, and part of the reason too is guys is, well, I'm watching my plants. I, I, I don't just say, hey, I'm giving them 1400 bang across. I, I watch them. Uh, a lot of times you can see that they might be getting a little bit too much nitrogen. Uh, they get kind of a really intense kind of a green. Uh, sometimes uh, you, know, you can see there's not enough. So I kind of watch what they need and then I feed them according. And, and the reason I'm able to do that, <laughs> the freshwater reservoir maintains that constant volume in my reservoir tank. So whatever leaves that constant volume will be the nutrients and I can just watch them fall, bang, 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 bang down. That's what I do. I do each one, uh, you know, separately and kind of, kind of by eyeball within a within a range that I know that that particular plant likes. But you know, you can tell whether to kind of bring them up or down a little bit. But anyway, that's how I keep track of it. I label each reservoir with uh, with the nutrient solution the day it went in. So at any other time when I'm taking a, a parts per million reading, I can see where that level came from and and what it's at now. It's been working really really good for me. Um, I recommend it if uh, you're as forgetful as, <laughs> as forgetful as I am. But anyway, it's been working really good for me. I'll uh, pass that along. Uh, I know it seems silly, but doggone it, you know, every time I go back there next week and take that level and I see that tag, hey. <laughs> Any, anyway, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty forgetful about all that stuff at times anyway, to keep track of things. Um, putting that little label on there, uh, I found for myself is awesome because I can really, really see what each reservoir is eating. I, got, I have four in here and uh, I can see what they're doing. I, I can see how hungry they are. When they're feeding really heavy, I hit them really heavy. When they kind of slow down, yeah, I slow down on the newts. Uh, no sense just uh, wasting them. Anyway, okay. I'd mentioned earlier at the, at the uh, front of the video, uh, the begin the front, yeah, no, at the beginning of the video about Paul's garden, a guy sent me in a picture of his Dutch bucket system. Okay, check it out. This is Paul's garden, and uh, he was inspired by watching MHP Gardener and myself uh, uh, in the email. He explained to me, and he sent uh, he sent this uh, sent this picture in to show me what he'd done. And listen, guys, that is so fantastic. Uh, you know, just uh, just the thought that I might have inspired somebody to uh, to pursue this, man. I'm well, uh, it's awesome, and I really encourage everyone else to try. It's so rewarding, guys. Not only are you eating awesome vegetables, you're spending some really, really good time doing something that's really just plain good for you. Uh, good for you. Anyway, I encourage everyone else to try this, like Paul. If you do, send me in your photos. I'll put them in the videos. All right. Okay, guys. Well, look, that's all I've got until next uh, until next time, and I hope this finds you well. And uh, until then. Hey, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe. Click. <laughs> anyway, until next time, guys. Above all things, be good to each other. Be good to each other in all things, guys. Uvidíme se později. Buďte na sebe hodní šitní. Na zdraví. Cheers, everyone.